Hello and welcome back. My name is Robin Parsons and I'm a midwifery lecturer from Middlesex University. Today we're diving into an important topic, maternal sepsis. I'm here to break it down in a way that will be easy to understand and prepare you for your obstetric emergencies assessment. Maternal sepsis, often called puerperal sepsis or puerperal fever, is a key concern to healthcare providers. According to the latest Embrace report, in the last triennium, infection continued to be one of the most frequent causes of maternal death. In the UK and Ireland, 78 women died from sepsis between 2019 and 2021, representing a maternal mortality rate from sepsis of 2.5 per 100,000 maternities. Pregnant women are uniquely at risk for infection as their immune system is suppressed to support fetal development. They are also often exposed to a series of invasive procedures or surgeries which can further increase their risk of developing an infection. Of the women in the last triennium, they die from genital tract sepsis, postnatal group A streptococcus, influenza and COVID-19 pneumonitis. Women also die from other infections including pneumonia, meningitis, myocarditis, HIV and disseminated staphylococcal infection. So, while we've made tremendous strides over the last century, infection still remains one of the top causes of maternal death worldwide. So, what is sepsis? Well, maternal sepsis is a life-threatening condition that arises when the body's response to infection causes injury to its own tissues and organs during pregnancy, childbirth, post-abortion or the postpartum period. It occurs when an infection that is already present in the body, for example in the skin, lungs or genital tract, triggers a chain reaction throughout the body. Normally during an infection, the body will release chemicals into the bloodstream to fight the infection. And sepsis happens when the body's response to those chemicals is out of balance and it triggers widespread inflammation that can lead to blood clots and leaky blood vessels. This then damages or impairs blood flow and can in turn damage the body's organs by depriving them of nutrients and oxygen. So prompt treatment of sepsis is crucial and typically involves antibiotics, intravenous fluids and sometimes medications to support blood pressure. Sepsis can be caused by infections from bacteria, viruses, fungi or parasites. However, bacterial infections are the most common culprits. So early detection and intervention is key to improve outcomes. We can prevent infections through vaccinations, good hygiene and prompt treatment of initial infections. These are all aspects that are key to the role of the midwife. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of sepsis. As we said, early detection is key, so here's what you need to look out for. A tachycardia, a heart rate above 100 beats per minute. You may also see changes in the fetal, you, you may also see fetal tachycardia if you're doing CTG monitoring a raised respiratory rate above 24, a high or low temperature, hypertension with a systolic BP below 90 millimetres of mercury and low oxygen saturation with less than 95% on air. And we may also see poor peripheral perfusion, a capillary refill of less than two seconds. Symptoms can include fever and chills. You may observe a wound infection either from a caesarean incision or a perineal wound foul smelling vaginal discharge, vaginal bleeding, a low urine output of less than 0.5 mils per kilo per hour, diarrhea, vomiting, pain, rash can all accompany these um, symptoms. A woman may present with a, sore, with a sore throat with or without a productive uh, cough, clamminess, confusion and a rash or mottled skin. Now remember, pregnant women can compensate very well so clinical observations of heart rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate and temperature should be taken early, accurately and regularly in women with suspected sepsis. Plotting clinical observations on a maternity early warning chart may help in the recognition of sepsis and is important to identify emerging trends. A key role of the midwife is also to anticipate any risk factors for sepsis, which could include retained products of conception, a manual removal of placenta, prolonged rupture of membranes, caesarean section, premature labour, diabetes mellitus, gestational or pre-existing, obesity, a recurrent urinary tract infection, cervical sutures, 
or following an invasive intrauterine procedure, for example, an amniocentesis. When it comes to managing maternal sepsis, swift action is crucial. Always remember to follow your ABC, your airway, breathing, circulation. The UK Sepsis Trust has also developed a life-saving protocol called the Sepsis 6. These are six key tasks that need to be done within one hour by frontline practitioners. And we can break them down. Oxygen. You need to administer oxygen to maintain saturations above 94%. Cultures. Take blood cultures before starting antibiotics if possible. Antibiotics. Administer broad spectrum antibiotics within one hour. Fluids. Provide fluid resuscitation, usually with a bolus of crystalloid of 500 ml over 15 minutes. Lactate measurement. Check blood lactate levels and urine output monitoring. Insert a Foley catheter and monitor urine output. Remember, every hour of delay in administering antibiotics raises the mortality rate by 7.5%. So time is of the essence. Here is how to manage sepsis step by step. The first thing you need to do is call for help. You need to assemble a team including a senior midwife, a registrar or consultant obstetrician, a consultant anaesthetist, a scribe and a runner and you may also need additional midwives to help. You should initiate an emergency call. Get your emergency equipment ready. You might have a sepsis trolley and a specific call out via the hospital switchboard. Airway. Maintain the airway and administer oxygen. You'll need to monitor respiratory rate and oxygen saturations, aiming for an SpO2 above 94%. As we've said before, make sure you document everything on the means chart. Circulation. Ensure that you're checking blood pressure and pulse rate. You'll need to insert two large ID cannulas and you'll need to take some blood tests. Ideally, you'll take blood cultures before you administer antibiotics, and you should also draw blood for a lactate, a BBG or ABG, full blood count, use and ease, CRP, clotting screen, and liver function tests. We can commence our fluid resuscitation by giving that bolus of crystalloid 500 ml over 15 minutes. We then need to administer drugs. Um, if we are already administering prophylactic antibiotics, they should be stopped and we need to start that broad spectrum IV antibiotics within an hour following our local hospital guidelines due to varying antibiotic resistant patterns. You should also give IV paracetamol to manage maternal temperature if needed. As well as considering our input, we also need to monitor our output. So we'll monitor urine output with a Foley catheter and we'll use a urometer to monitor this closely and accurately. We next need to determine the cause of the sepsis. This involves taking various samples which can be sent to pathology for further testing. We'll be taking a high vaginal swab, a low vaginal swab, a midstream urine. We'll also need to do an MRSA swab, a placental swab if the placenta um, is available, and COVID if appropriate. We may also be taking stool samples, sputum samples, Chest x-ray or a pelvic ultrasound or abdominal ultrasound could also be useful. Our ongoing treatment includes continuous CTG monitoring if the client is currently pregnant. And we may need to plan to expedite the birth if necessary and inform the neonatal doctors as the baby will require prophylactic antibiotics. As with all care, comprehensive documentation is essential and ideally you'd nominate a scribe to do this. Following the incident, it is important to have a debrief with the client and any birthing partners who are present. As with every emergency, we should ensure that we document everything fully and have a reflection following the scenario with ideally the team who are working or with, for example, a professional midwifery advocate to reflect on what could be done differently next time. Thank you for watching. That discusses the initial management of sepsis. For further information, I recommend you look at the UK Sepsis Trust guidance and consult with your local trust guidance also.